Hello Internet, my name is Jack and I'm here to show you how to win at LinkedIn, hopefully in 15 minutes or less. So, we all know that the point of LinkedIn is to connect with people in the business sense, right? And uh, a lot of success comes down to who you know. But you probably figured that just being well known isn't enough. Charles Manson was well known, Emperor Nero was well known, and they didn't really succeed in the traditional sense. So, people knowing you isn't enough. They have to find some value in what you do and what you are, and it helps if they like and respect you as well. So, aside from being awesome at what you do, more people have got to know you. And it's not necessarily who you know, but who knows you, and that they know you for the right reasons. There's a lot of ways to get this to happen, but this is where LinkedIn is pretty helpful. So. You may use Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or any of the other social networks to keep in touch with your friends, celebrities, brands, etc. But LinkedIn is where you keep in touch with the people who may have more of a bearing on your career or business. And you probably already figured this out quite a while back. It's not to say you can't have your friends on LinkedIn in a kind of a business context. But LinkedIn's kind of like your online CV. If you've ever Googled yourself or a random name that isn't a celebrity one, you'll find that a lot of the time the results that come up are LinkedIn profiles. Try it and see what happens. So, people searching for you specifically are probably going to find you on LinkedIn pretty quickly if you're there. And if they can't find you there, they might wonder why not. Often these people are potential business contacts, employers, people you want to know, I suppose. Pre-job interviews, people will often check out your LinkedIn profile. People in your industry are going to look you up, etc., etc. So, as they say, LinkedIn and internet are serious business. And you can even get business off of LinkedIn. In fact, many people do. Uh, make money on LinkedIn? I guess if you're getting work off of it, you are. So why not? So let's try and get it right. So what am I going to go into in a nutshell? Uh, well, the, this is the basic idea in a nutshell. Go... TMI on your details, give as much information as you are comfortable with, and connect more. That's about it. So let's talk about mindset, helpfulness. You're on LinkedIn to help people and demonstrate how awesome you are at what you do. Well, I'd like to think I am anyway. Uh, this can be done via LinkedIn introductions, talk about that later, and by being yourself. So, don't be just another faceless upper body shot of some guy or gal in a tie or business attire who posts best practice about his industry till the cows come home, unless that's what you want to do. But don't do it because it's some idea in your head that you have to be that person, if it's not you. Uh, so, you want to be very professional, but not too very professional. Don't let your professionalism crush your style. In my humble opinion, it's not just a LinkedIn thing, but a life thing. Don't pitch everybody all the time. Pretty sure that nobody likes that. I get that a fair bit, and you get to the point where you're just not even reading the messages anymore. I guess these are fundamental ideas, but you can never hear them enough. So, on LinkedIn, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing to gain from I don't knowing people, IDKing, as they call it on that network. If someone wants to connect with you on LinkedIn, they're not going to be able to get any more information here than you want to give away how much you put on your profile. So it's not a matter of people suddenly knowing where you live because you've connected with them on LinkedIn. In that regard, it's a bit like Twitter. It probably doesn't bother you that much when someone new to you follows you, unless you're one of those people with a more private profile. And that's cool if that's what you want to do. But provided you're looking after the amount of information you give away, security shouldn't be a problem. Uh, personally, I believe in a more open approach, which has uh, helped me in my career. And that's why I am a lion, which I'll now explain. So, what's a lion? Well, if you've been around on LinkedIn for a while, you may have come across a few of these acronyms. A lion stands for a LinkedIn open networker. And there's a few other networks and acronyms that are banging around like ONA and TopLinked. So, these are people uh, with an open networking philosophy. They proactively connect with and accept ads from other people who they have little to no prior experience with. The rationale behind that is that knowing people is good. It's very easy to connect with like-minded people this way. I mean, it's pretty much clicking a button. And there's pretty much, or usually, no downside. I've yet to experience one, and I've been doing it for a few years now. So, why not, as they say. Uh, you'll find a lot of the people that connect with you in this way are involved in recruitment, which is fair enough. 
So if you want to get into freelance recruiting, open networking is a great way to build up a huge network and get started with that. Uh, a lot of the people that you find here are interesting entrepreneurial types and definitely worth knowing, at least to some extent. FYI. So, how to be an open networker. Make it obvious. I put lion in my name so people can see. Um, another thing you should do is create a new email address for LinkedIn if you haven't already. Because this address will get spammed to shit. Put this email somewhere near the top of your profile so that people who want to invite you can. And if you see other lions, add them. Profit. So what are the benefits of this? Well, you are making contacts of a like mind, these other open networkers. You might accidentally find yourself getting open endorsements. I don't really believe in this, but it seems to be something people are doing for me quite a lot. An endorsement is when someone, I guess, gives a plus one to one of the skills uh, listed on your LinkedIn profile. Um, I assume it's people being nice and having seen my previous work, but I don't really know. It looks good, though. Um, you make more contacts and you end up with a ridiculously large extended network, which is only a good thing. Uh, it increases the odds you'll be able to connect with specific people in the future via second and third degree mutual LinkedIn connections. Myself, I sometimes work as a writer journalist and I need to contact people for various reasons. And I'll tell you what, LinkedIn makes this so much easier than just sending cold emails out there. So the idea of exponentiality is worth a little talk about. Um, you know more than three people. Most of your contacts are going to know more than three people. But if you look at the diagram, even three people knowing three people knowing three people, it multiplies the amount of people you can get in touch with exponentiality and makes this idea of super connectivity easy. Um, that's what networking has always been. And LinkedIn just kind of formalizes that and makes it a little easier to do. So... Think about that when you're connecting with someone. It's not just who you know and who they know, it's who they know knows, etc. Um, and here's another way to look at it, because you can never go wrong with enough science. Uh, a network in other definitions can be described as a system comprised of interconnected individual components that through these interactions does something. So uh, you're an individual part of this network, a component, and so are other people. So what you're doing when you are business networking is you're building stronger connections and adding more components to your system and network. This makes the overall system, so you and all the other people, work better. Um, basically, as a result, the system creates good things that make you happy, like a better job, better business, interesting people, and not just for you. It does it for everyone. It's like you're all building a communal structure together. So look at it scientifically. Networks can be seen as awesome. So here's some bad practice, things probably not to do. Asking random people you have no experience with for LinkedIn recommendations. I seem to get this every other day and it's stupid. Why would I stake my reputation on the line uh, to recommend you if I have no idea who you are? Because think about it, every time you are recommending someone, you're endorsing them personally. You're attaching your credibility to them. If it turns out that they're basically not who they say they are, your credibility suffers. Spamming group invites to people who aren't relevant to your industry is another thing that people do. It's really pointless. I wish people would stop doing it. I don't care about the automotive industry in Germany. Whatever. Um, so, yeah. Quite subjective. If you want an IT recruiting group, not much help to invite someone who works in the music industry into your group. So, please, to any of the people on LinkedIn who may be doing this, cut it out. You know, do your research before you invite somebody. Uh, what to expect? Now that you are LinkedIn open networking or thinking about it, you are going to get a lot of spam accounts. And they're going to try and add you and promote stupid affiliate links to crap that you don't care about. Sometimes in your newsfeed and more rarely in your inbox. These spam accounts are usually generic job titles filled out with profiles that are very sparse in information. I mean, they're, they're pretty harmless. They just, you know, they just send out junk. Um, but don't encourage them by clicking their links. You can instead, as the little diagram shows, you click hide in the top right corner of their message and that gets rid of the, uh, well, that gets rid of the stuff that they're sending out. You don't see it again, which is kind of handy. Um, 
some giveaway signs. A lot of them read as HR manager at, and then some random company name that doesn't actually exist. And they always use generic female profile pictures that have been scraped off of the net. It's really quite paranoid and time consuming trying to work out who's real and who's not. So I just click accept and hide the ones who are spammy. Life's too short for that. And here is a probable example. As you can see, generic title, image seems kind of too posed. Uh, nothing's really given away here. It feels shifty. And uh, what did they say? The more you know. So I'm going to address now a few ways you can tweak your profile to make it more powerful. Um, and this obviously makes use of all the benefits that I described to you at the beginning of the tutorial. So you've got this idea of profile completion. I am pretty sure that this helps with your internal LinkedIn SEO. And it looks good because this is your online CV and you want your CV to look good. It reflects upon you. Um, so if you... Oh yeah, this is another thing. If you don't share a name with someone who's famous, you can think of your name as a keyword to rank on like any other. Uh, in this age of everyone being on the internet doing stuff and eventually all going towards freelance employment, perhaps you need to be, you know, you need to be known for who you are and what you do. So think about that. Um, getting your LinkedIn profile is a large part of this. And as I said earlier, they rank on Google for name searches. So own your name. So here's a, a recommendation based around applying the ideas from ad copywriting to your LinkedIn profile. Uh, when you have a free day, spend it giving as much information as possible on your previous previous work history and the stuff you do. Uh, you know, just max that shit out. Uh, you know, there's that old maxim that's been floating around for ages now that content is king. Your profile is content, so apply it to your profile. If you look on the right, you see my one, uh, which I've screenshot from my LinkedIn profile, and I literally hit the word limit on it. I see no reason not to. It took me not very long because everyone's pretty good about talking about themselves, right? <laughs> I know I am. Uh, next. Another thing to think about is using the inverted pyramid structure that uh, we use in press releases and in writing articles. So you put the most interesting stuff at the top, and the least interesting stuff at the bottom. Uh, you, if you look at the pyramid, that's kind of an easier way to visualize it than me describing it. Um, so break it into paragraphs as well, because seriously, everyone hates walls of text. That's why academic textbooks are so boring to most people. It's intimidating. But small paragraphs, bullet points, people like to see that. Uh, so, to appear more interesting, make your profile look more interesting. Uh, you know, be creative. You're allowed to be creative. You can use some unusual characters in the structure of your text. Uh, most people haven't done that at the moment, so it stands out a little. And uh, here you can show or at least hint to your character, your uniqueness, you know, your hobbies, your skills, your experiences, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's another thing you can add called projects, which are pretty cool. Uh, projects are... Well, I see them as skills demonstrations. So I've kind of looked at my work history and seen what skills do I have from the work I've done over the past few years and added them. Um, what you can do then is link them to other things you've worked on with other members of LinkedIn. Uh, for many of the stuff I did, I don't have a specific team member on LinkedIn being self-employed. So I've just added uh, the word various clients publications to other team members. If you see on the right in the uh, screenshot, you can see that there. Uh, add your interests because interests are interesting and they might act as keywords. I don't know. So if you're an artist, you may add all the schools of thought that you follow or the media that you work in. I fill mine mainly with career related stuff and a few other personal interests. Not sure if many people really read this stuff, but it doesn't take that long to do. It's like 10 minutes and it's like before, it's not that hard to think about what you enjoy, right? Next on to specialties. Again, gratuitous TMI is the solution. Obviously, these are specialties, not generalities. So for me, I only listed the stuff I'd consider myself as some kind of expert on. I don't really think I'm an expert in anything, but this is the stuff that I'm better at than other things. Uh, portfolio links, another part of the profile you shouldn't skip on. 
these are gold dust. Um, you know that old saying, actions speak louder than word? Well, these are a way, in a way, actions. They're evidence of what you do. Don't just talk about what you do, show people. Let your work speak for itself, and then add words anyway. This is uh, especially important for creatives, but it's good for any anyone and everyone, really. So, if you're an illustrator, maybe you want to have your Behance portfolio. If you're in procurement, maybe something that shows hard evidence of the savings you made for your company. I do photography, um, so for me, I added some PDF flyers, folios of my work and my book, because I wrote a book a while back. Um, so yeah, if you're a photographer, think about it. Some of your best images. Uh, if you're a writer, you can include some of your cuttings of your most authoritative uh, publications that you've written for. So let's talk about LinkedIn recommendations. If you feel you deserve one, you should ask. Uh, I found it rare that people are going to be thoughtful enough just to give you one. You know, people are busy with their own lives and stuff. And though people aren't always quick to give them, they're usually not resistant either. They just need a little bit of a push. Um, as in all things, you don't ask, you don't get. So, ask. Uh, you can help people with this process by offering to write the text of the recommendation for them. Because, as I said, everyone's busy all the time. It's also good because you can write the recommendation in a way that suits you. Uh, just make sure that you write a truthful recommendation that covers what you did for this person. You know, that make it up. That will bite you in the backside if you don't. Um... Recommendations are testimonials, and this is very powerful social proof. You know, it's someone else singing your praises is far more credible than just you singing your praises. You know, it's an objective third party, or a more objective third party saying you're good. So, try and get some recommendations if you deserve them. Almost done now. So LinkedIn is your online CV and part of your professional online presence. Expect to be Googled and expect to have LinkedIn come up. Connect more, talk to strangers, be nice to strangers. Go TMI on your profile info. Give as much information as you can. Do most of the work on your profile in one go so you can go and do other stuff with your life. LinkedIn is for your job or business. It isn't your job or business unless you are some sort of LinkedIn consultant or something like that. So see it as a tool, you know, see it as a means, not an end. And if you are sold on the idea of open networking, go uh, be a lion and see what happens. I recommend it. Serendipitous experience. Uh, use LinkedIn to connect others to and drive traffic to your other stuff online. Think of it like a portfolio. Get LinkedIn recommendations, because third-party credibility is so much better than just singing your own praises. Have portfolio links. LinkedIn is there to sell how awesome you are and demonstrate your experience and expertise. Words only go so far. Treat LinkedIn networking like any other kind of networking or normal life. Just be good to people, be helpful, put good stuff out there, and you may find that good stuff comes back to you. Be professional, uh, put your best foot forward, but don't be so professional that you're just boring. And uh, drawing that distinction is completely down to you. Use your discretion, but take a few risks. Here's me on LinkedIn. I like to connect with people. I'm a lion, so send me a request if you like, and I will accept. If you want some help or to talk, I'm on Twitter as Kukavaya. Please don't message me on YouTube because YouTube is all spammy and I don't ever read the inbox anymore. Good luck.